Shabbat Shalom and Maranatha. Welcome back to the Septuagint versus the Masoretic channel. Uh, today we're looking at Joshua chapter 11. There are 23 verses in this chapter. And again, according to our new format, uh, we're going to only look at the M's, which is uh, mention. So we are skipping a lot here. Not too many uh, big ones. Beginning in verse 6, see our first one that's uh, worthy of mention. It's a significant difference. It says here, I will put them to flight before Israel versus will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. So it's one thing to have your enemies fleeing before you. It's another thing altogether to simply uh, have them killed before you. Deliver, delivering them up to be killed, or delivering them up pre-killed, so they're already dead. Next difference, fast forwarding to verse 9. Again, we want to be more efficient with our time here in these videos. Uh, verse 9, the word huff, or I think it's pronounced huffed. So uh, it says it in both translations that... Uh, as Joshua did to them, I should say, and Joshua did to them, uh, talking to Zidon. No, not Zidon. This is the the uh, water of Maron. Okay, so anyway, they're going against these forces, the enemy forces, and says says that Joshua huffed their horses. What does that mean? It means to cripple. A lot of animal rights people will not be happy with this, but he crippled their horses. Okay, in verse 10. And it says here, Now, Hazor, verses 4, Hazor. So this is just a part of the narrative in the, the Masoretic, or I should say the Septuagint. Now, Hazor in former time was the chief of those kingdoms, so it's just like the narrator speaking, verses uh, for Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms. So uh, the distinction here being in the Masoretic, the king was killed because or for he was the head of all those kingdoms. Not so much part of the narrative, but giving the rationale behind his death, his, his killing. Verse 12, slew. Versus smote. Now this dif this difference occurs many times, you'll notice. But uh, I'm pointing this out here. I'm focusing on it because uh, the definition of slew, according to the dictionary, is to kill or execute. And the definition, the very definition of to smote, is not to kill or execute. It is to deliver a lethal blow. So that's verse twelve. Verse fourteen. We see he versus they uh, until he destroyed them. And then it says they in the uh, Masoretic. I have to point out here that the translation, the English, the English translation at least of this, uh, this part is grammatically incorrect in the Septuagint. Let me just pause. Okay, pardon, I had to sneeze there. <laughs> and in verse 15, it says, He transgressed no precept. Talking about Joshua. Uh, verses, uh, he left nothing undone. Okay, moving on to verse 17. Destroyed took all their kings and destroyed versus slew, or I should say smote them. So he destroyed the inhabitants, possibly, versus he smote and slew the kings only. So I'm not saying that's what he did, that he killed all the inhabitants, but it is possible. Because that's not part of the, the thought process when it's talking about their kings, and then there's another thought, 
and destroyed and slew them. But again, the punctuation was inserted by uh, translators. So perhaps it's talking about the kings only. Verse 19, our first big difference in this chapter. Uh, there was no city which Israel took not. They took all in war. In the Masoretic, it is rendered very differently. Big difference again. It says there, there was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel. Okay. Uh, and there's an addition of save the Hivites, uh, the inhabitants of Gibeon. And then it uses the word war versus battle. Uh, it's important to know this: there was violence on both sides. It was a consensual, if I could use that term, consensual warfare. Versus Israel were the one. They were the ones that were invading and were causing uh, the violence. They're the ones instigating it. Verse 20. Uh, harden their hearts. So the word harden can also be translated as strengthen, uh, which can mean to embolden, which is a positive trait. Mostly it's seen that way. It's not necessarily a negative trait, such as when someone is stubborn. Uh, to go forth to war with Israel, uh, I should say against Israel, versus that they should come against Israel in battle. So we can see they marched forward to their death versus they met with Israel. Uh, that they might be utterly destroyed versus that they, uh, that he might destroy them utterly. So the focus here is on the enemies being destroyed on in the Septuagint versus in the Masoretic, the focus is on God or Joshua destroying the enemies. Okay. Um, that mercy should not be granted to them versus they might have no favor. Mercy versus favor, which can also mean grace, or it could be understood that way. A big difference in 21, or second big difference. It says, and from all the race of Israel... Uh, this one is not easily understood, especially in this age of anti-racism. Uh, this is, is this speaking of Israel's children who are mixed with the nations, with this nation or people, or is this a main, uh, or is this a mistranslation of a word that should mean something else? It can also be translated as to, as per the footnote and to all the race of Israel. Uh, so they destroyed all the Anakim from all these lands that are mentioned from that are mentioned and from all two from all two of Israel. So instead of the, it's two, and from all two of Israel, if that makes any sense. So the Anakim are understood to be giants and possibly the result of interspecies breeding of angels with female humans, women. Therefore, this can make sense after all. Verse 22, this verse confirms that the Anakim were wiped out or genocided, except for in these three places mentioned, Gaza, Gath, and Aseldo. And that's all for this chapter. So thank you very much for your time. May I bless you and make your way prosper. Uh, until next time, this is the Septuagint versus the Masoretic. Shabbat Shalom, or Shalom if it's not the Shabbat for you at this time. And Maranatha, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, uh, chapter 12 of Joshua. Thank you.